Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us. Uh, today you are going to learn how to create a fully functional Apex application from a spreadsheet. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Monica Godoy. I'm product manager on the Oracle Apex team. And if you want to reach me out, you can find me on social media and here's my Twitter handle. Before to start, we would like to know you better. So please navigate to this link to fill out this short anonymous survey. And don't worry, we are not going to ask you any private information. Here's the agenda. Today, I'm going to talk about the new option to run your Apex applications, which is called the Apex service. Then I will walk you through the creation of the Apex service and create the application from a spreadsheet. If you have any questions, please post those in the Q&A and we are going to be happy to answer. Okay, so let's talk about the Oracle Apex application development service which is the fastest, lowest cost way to develop and deploy your Apex applications. Your Apex service is going to be ready in just a few minutes, and you don't need to be an expert in a vast array of technologies such as database administration, security, or uh, systems architecture. Okay, Oracle is going to take care of all of this and you can concentrate on solving business problems. With the Apex service, you are going to get Oracle Apex, which is the uh, proven and effective platform for deploying uh, or developing applications. Oracle Autonomous Database is included, so you can build a wide variety of applications uh, applications and you can use different data types or handle any workload. And your applications will run on Xara hardware on the Oracle Cloud. If you want to learn more about the Apex service, you can go to apex.oracle.com. Okay, so let's move to the workshop. And the first thing that you need to do is to sign up for an Oracle free trial account. Okay, and then you can create the Apex service. Then we are going to create the Apex workspace. And lastly, you are going to create an Apex application from a spreadsheet. Okay, so uh, if you don't have an Oracle account, please use this link to create it. Your email address is whitelisted. So please use the same email address that you use to register to this event, okay? In case that you are facing any type of issues with your email address, please post the issue in the chat, including your email address. This link is going to be shared in the chat as well. Okay, so here's the link to the lab. So you can follow the steps uh, by your own, at your own pace, during this workshop or later. Okay, so now we are going to start uh, creating the free trial account and creating the Apex service. Okay, so let me. So here is the lab that we are going to follow today. And the, you have different options to run this lab. But we are going to use today the option number one which is called the Oracle Apex Application Development Service. Okay, so follow the steps. Then remember that the first thing that you need to do is to create your free 
account. Okay, once you get your free uh, account, you can go to the Oracle Cloud environment. I already have my environment, so let me click in the navigation menu, scroll down, and you are going to find the Apex application development. Click on Apex instances. And let's create the Apex service. Okay, so we need to provide basic information for the Apex service. For compartment, you can choose a compartment within your OCI tenancy, you can use the default rule root compartment, or you can change to a different compartment. For display name, enter a user-friendly name to help you easily identify the service instance. And for database name, enter a name for the underlying database. Now, let's configure the Apex service. The available database version is 19C. And for OCPU, specify the number of OCPU cores for your database. Always you can uh, add more CPUs. And for a storage, uh, a specified storage in terabytes that you need to make available to your database. And uh, by default, the auto scaling is going to be uh, enabled. So this is going to allow the system automatically use up to three times more CPU to meet workload at demand, okay? If you don't want to use the auto scaling, you can select this option. Now, let's create the administrator, administrator credentials, okay? So by default, the username is admin. So we need to enter the password and confirm the password. Now we are ready to create the Apex service. Okay, uh, in this page, you can find helpful details about your new service instance, including its name, version information, and usage metrics. While my Apex service is provisioned, I will give you some minutes to create the Oracle account and to create the Apex service, okay? So in the meantime, follow uh, the instructions to create your Oracle free trial account and to create the uh, Apex service. Okay, great job for those that have done all the steps, creating, signing up for a free TL account and creating the Apex service. The next step is to create the Apex workspace, and then we are going to create the Apex application from a spreadsheet, right? Hey, hey Monica, can you show again, uh, you don't have to complete it all the way, but just guide people how they would, either where they can find the steps to create the Apex service or show it in your browser, please. Okay, if you are in the Oracle Cloud environment, uh, just click in the navigation menu, scroll down until you find Apex application development. Click on Apex instances. and click Create Apex Service. Okay, you just need to provide basic information, uh, configure the Apex Service, and enter the administrator credentials. That's all, and you can click Create Apex Service. Um, and all the steps that you need to do uh, to create this, um, Apex service are in the lab, okay? So you can follow also the steps in the lab. 
as white. Okay, so let me go back to my instances. And uh, my APEC service is available now. So I am ready to go with APEX. I can launch APEX right now. And let's do that. Okay. So now you need to uh, sign in to the administration services, enter the password that you use uh, for uh, creating the APEX service, and click in sign in to the administration. Okay, so now we can create a workspace. Okay, and uh, let's click create the workspace, enter the database user, the password, and Again, all of these steps are in the lab. Click Create Workspace. And we are ready to start creating the applications using Apex. At the top, you are going to find a message that it says that the, your workspace is created and you can sign in into your new workspace. Let's click on Demo. And enter your password. Click sign in. Okay, so this is the Apex environment in which you can find, you can uh, create your applications. Uh, you are going to find four main components. There are the app builder where you can create and maintain the applications. SQL workshop where you can create and maintain database objects in development where you can track Apex development projects and the app gallery which contains a number of productivity and sample applications that can be installed in minutes. Okay, so Joel, do you think we can follow with the next step or we should give some minutes. I, I would just make sure that people are, are caught up with you, or, or at least if, if they're not, um, where they can follow uh, to get to this point. Right, because one person, uh, they're still waiting for this to be provisioned. So I would wait just a minute or two. Okay, perfect. So we are going to wait uh, two minutes. Yeah, for, for the people who are waiting for the service to be created and it's still yellow, I, I find that that sometimes doesn't automatically refresh. And if you go ahead and reload your browser, um, hopefully it'll show as green and created. Okay, I have seen that many people reported that the APEX service is available. And please confirm that we can follow to the, with the next steps. Uh, so, so Monica, in your browser, can you just show in the lab itself, the person mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, where they should uh, be creating the workspace? Where those instructions are. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, um, so once you have created the Apex workspace, you are going to find uh, this message at the top. So we can, so you can click on demo and then you can sign in in your new workspace. Once you are signing to your new workspace, you can find the app builder, okay? And the app builder is where you can create and maintain the applications. Sure, um, here's the, 
The workspace name is demo. Okay. The password. If in case Kim, if you are creating the workspace, uh, here is the suggested password that you that you could enter creating the workspace. Okay. So. I'm going to go to my new workspace and let's create the application. So, navigate to Alt Builder and create a new application. In this case, we are going to create an application from a file. You can upload a CSV or Excel, XML or JSON file. Also, you can copy and paste data, and then you can create your application. So let me click from a file. And to simplify this lab, you can use sample data set. OK? And we are going to use the project and task. And the first row is the title of the columns. And you can see all the rows with different information regarding projects and tasks. Now, let's click Next. And since this is a new uh, Apex environment, this is a new database, we, are, we don't have any existing table. So we need to create a new table. And let's enter the name of this table, OK? And, par and review the parts uh, information, OK? Once you are ready with the sample data set, you can load the data, OK? So the table was created with 73 rows. And now we can view the table or create the application. Let's view the table. Okay, so this is my only table, okay? And I can see all the columns and the different ty data types for the columns. You can have different options here, like add or modify a column. And also, you can create an application. Let's click Create Application. Click Create Application again. Okay, so you can enter the name of the name of the application. You can define the team style that you want to use for your application. You can set a style at this moment or later. Also, you can define the type of navigation that you will to use in your application. Okay, so Apex ha have uh, listed some pages for us like the home page, a dashboard, a face research page, an interactive report, and a calendar. Okay, so we are going to check all the features and we are going to create the application. Okay, so let's wait for some minutes while the application is ready. Okay, 
So the application is ready and you can run the application right here. And also you can find different pages that are included in your application. So let's run the application and enter your user and password. Okay. So this is the home page of your application. Go to navigation menu and you can find and explore your application. Okay. At the bottom, you are going to find the developer toolbar, which is available when you are locked in Apex as a developer and you are running the application. And users are not able to see this toolbar. Okay. So you can go to the Oracle Apex Home or you can go directly to the uh, home of the application. You can edit this page. Uh, you can debug the page and also you can find the theme roller. So if I want to change the style for my application, I can uh, click on the theme roller and select different uh, settings for my style. Okay. Also, you can enter custom CSS. I'm going to select the red with light style and let me set as current. Okay, so we have completed the laboratory number one and let me know uh, which step are you, did you follow the steps and did you finish uh, all the labs already? Please let me know. Okay, uh, we know said that if I can show the last step again. Okay, so let me see. And we are in the lab. Number one, creating the application. So we uh, select. So we click, uh, you need to click on create a new application from a file then click on copy and paste and you can select a sample data set in this case we are using the project and task enter the table name which is project underscore task click load data and then create the application so for creating the application you can go to view table click create app and enter the name for the application, okay? Check all the features and click create the application. Once the application is ready, you can run the application, enter the username and the password. And you can explore your uh, application. Uh, Anthony is saying that he got lost at creating the Apex environment. And once you are in the Oracle Cloud environment, just click on the navigation menu, Apex application development, and click Apex instance. Okay, so um, all of the steps to, to create the Apex service are right here in the option number one so you can follow the steps uh, at your own pace okay okay so let's move to the laugh number two and we are going to improve the faster search page and let me show you uh, first uh, the dashboard which includes four different charts, and you can add more charts to this page or modify the existing charts. Okay, remember that you have the developer toolbar and you can click on edit the page. 
All right, so let's go to the project tax search. And uh, in this page, this page includes a number of faces on the left. And users can check the values to limit the data shown in the report at the right. Okay. For example, if you want to see uh, a particular project, the tax for this project, or if you want to see the status for a task, you can click the status right here, okay? And you can use the clear to uh, clear the values for the faces. Also, you can find this little icon where you can see a, a chart as a bar chart or a pie chart with the information that you have checked, depending on the information that you have checked, okay? So, um, what are we going to enhance on this table? So, look at the status facet, okay? This is a common criteria in search, so it should be but it will be better if we move this uh, facet between project and assigned, okay? And another thing is that it's unlikely that end users want to select more than one status at a time. So what we're going to do is to edit this page to move to reorder the facet and to change the type of the facet. So let me go to edit this page. In my case, is the page number three. Okay, and you can find the page designer. Basically, you can find here three panes. The first pane is a rendering or is a rendering tree with all the components that are in your page. In the middle pane, you can find the layout a representation where you are going to run your application, and a gallery with different regions, items, and buttons. The right pane is, the, is where you can edit the properties that the, the component that you have selected, all right? So let's navigate to the face research, okay? and let's navigate to the status. So we want to move this facet between the projects and assign to. And the second thing where we want to do is to change the type of this facet. So let's move it to radio group, select radio group, and we are going to uh, scroll down to find the list entries and for zero count entries, select show last. Okay, save, save the changes and run the page. Okay, so now the status facet is the second facet and you can easily uh, select the tags that you want to see. For example, if you want to see only the open task, or you can clear the facet. Okay, the next step is that you maybe have noticed that we have three facets that we are not able to see it when we are uh, running the page. So what we are going to, to do is to collapse uh, the assigned to budget and the cost in that way that we can see all the budgets at a time, okay? So let's edit the page again and select assign to the budget and the cost. In the filter, enter collapse and we can uh, switch the initially collapse to all. Save and run the page again. Okay, so now you can see all the faces at a time. And if you want to span one of the faces and check and check one of the values to see the tags 
that meet that criteria. Okay, so we have complete step number one, enhancing the status facet and collapsing the facet. The next lab is the lab number three. We are going to improve the report and the form. Okay. And um, Emilia said that if I can repeat the last edit page. Okay. So, sorry, let's go to the lab two. And the last thing that I did was to collapse these three facets assigned to budget and the cost. So you can select using the shift K to select the three facets and then go to the right pane, enter in the filter collab, and you can find the initially collapse attributes. Switch to on, and now you can see the three faces that are collapsed. Okay, so let's move to the lab number three, and we are going to enhance the interactive report and enhance the form. So let me go to the app my application. And uh, so here is the interactive report. Uh, it's, um, I think it's the most powerful uh, component that we have in Apex. It, it, it has a lot of actions. For example, if you want to filter, uh, if you want to create an aggravation, a computation, uh, if you want to create a control break, highlight, some rows for a particular condition. You can, you, you can create a chart or create a pivot table. As well, you can download the data, okay? So what we're going to do in this uh, step to enhance the interactive report is first, uh, we are going to create a control break. So we are, go we are going to create the control break for the project. Let's click control break. And now we are going to see all the tasks that are related for the project. Okay, so in this way, it's much easier to identify the tasks that are for uh, that are related to for to the project. Okay. Now the next step is to create a computation. So for that, navigate to actions. Click on data. Sorry, again, data, compute. And we need to create, a, or we need to enter the column label. In this case, what we want to do is to know the difference between the budget and the cost. So the name of the column is going to say, we are going to enter the budget versus the cost, okay? The format mask, we are going to select the first one, okay? And for, uh, to use the columns inside of the report, we can, we can just select the, the particular column that are associated with that letter, okay? So we're going to select budget minus the cost apply, and you are going to see the new budget versus cost column. Okay, now the next step is to create an aggregation for this column. Okay, let's navigate to actions and data and click on aggregate. Now, uh, the function that we are going to use is sum, and for column, select budget versus cost, apply, 
and you can find here uh, the total of this column, the budget versus cost, okay? So it's more easily to see and understand the information for the different tags and projects, okay? Now, the next step is to create a chart. So let's navigate to actions, click on chart, select bar, and for label, select project, value will be our uh, new column, budget versus cost, function is the zone, and for sort, select label ascend. The orientation for the chart, select horizontal and apply. Okay, so if you hover on uh, the records, you are going to see the uh, name of the project and the value. Okay, so you can see the report, this, the data, and also you can find the, uh, the chart. Okay, so the next step that we are going to do is to sort uh, the data, okay? So that way we can make sure that we are, uh, that we are uh, sorting the report by the project, by the start date and the end date. And for that, let's go back to the, to the report and navigate to actions, data and sort. So let's select for the second, select start date, and for the third option, select end date, okay? And uh, for end date, select for null sorting, select null always last. Apply changes. And now we can see uh, the, the report is sorted by the project, but also by the start date and the end date. Okay, let me go quickly to edit this form page. This is a model uh, form page. So we can edit the page as well using the developer toolbar. And what I'm going to do is to um, to organize the start date and end date at the same uh, line. So we can drag the end date to, to place at the same level of the, of the start date. And we can do the same for the cost and the budget, okay? Of course, you can make any other uh, change that you want to apply to this page. As well, you can create validations for the form page. Save. And since this is a model page, we can run the page directly. So we need to go to the application and open the, uh, the model page again. Okay, now we can see the changes right here. And I think we have some uh, minutes. Joe, do you think we have enough time to follow this, the, the lab? Or what do you suggest? You, you mean the next one, right? Yes. Um, I, I think it's fine just to ensure that you leave people a minute or two uh, to complete uh, your final survey and for us to give them their candid feedback. Okay. So, uh, again, if you haven't completed the lab today, you can do it later and here the all the steps that we have completed today. 
So you can follow the steps at your own pace and any time that you uh, want to do it. Um, I just want to show you the calendar where you can see all the, uh, the, the different projects that are in the table, okay? So in this case, we are showing here, we are displaying the project name, but maybe we can uh, display the task name and we can set up different actions. For example, if I want to open the model page when users click on a particular uh, task or a particular uh, project. Okay, so again, you just can edit the page, navigate to the calendar, and you can find the attributes for the region. So you can see that you edit a link and you can enter the information for the target page, okay? So in this case, I want to show uh, or I want to open the modal page. In, my case, in, the, in this application is the page number five. You need to set some items. For example, in my case, I need to set up the ID and the value. Clear the cache, depending on the page that you are targeting. And okay, so let's save the changes and run the page. So now when users click on that, uh, on that, uh, in this case is a project, so you can see the, um, so you can see the details for uh, the project or the task and you can apply changes or delete the, the record, okay? So please tell us what you think about this workshop and what would you like to see in the next workshop? Using, use this link below to submit the anonymous survey. And here are some useful links if you want to learn more about Apex and if you want to read the announcement about the Apex service. Thanks everyone for joining us. I hope this workshop was useful for all of you and please be tuned for our next workshop of February. Thank you. Hey, hey Monica, can you show the, yeah. the, the, the survey link again and then also the last uh, slide with all the links, please? Mm -hmm. Right, here is the, the survey link. Yeah, and, th and then just leave it on the page with all the other links if you could, please. So maybe we can copy this link in the chat as well. Yeah, it, yeah, it was. Okay, and here are the useful links. Okay, if you want to know everything about Apex, go to apex.oracle.com. And if you want to uh, find the Apex shortcuts, apex.oracle.com slash shortcuts. Okay. So I think we are ready. And thank you so much for joining us today and have a good day. Thank you.